Revenue from virtual and augmented reality could reach $120 billion by 2020. But what will the future of this advanced technology look like, do you think? CBS News science and futurist contributor Michio Kaku is a physics professor at the City University of New York City and joins us once again at the table. It's good to see you. Glad to be on. I remember being at a conference, Charlie, 15 years ago. It was the Allen Conference, and they talked about how years you'd be able to take your telephone, take pictures, speak on it, and hear music. And we thought, no way is that going to happen. <laughs> and now I'm sitting here and you're talking about virtual reality. I'm right. thinking, way, <laughs> way. So what does this all mean? Well, this could be the next big thing. Uh, we're talking about having virtual reality rooms in your living room, uh, universities using virtual reality to teach, uh, architects, astronauts, soldiers, uh, contractors, all of them using uh, virtual reality goggles in their line of work. To do what exactly? Well, if you want to simulate, for example, a building uh, and you're an architect, you want to move things around, that's very difficult. You put on the goggles, you start to move ta tables, chairs, stairways. Uh -huh. And if you're a military man, you want to change the battlefield, or you woman. can't do that. Or woman. Right, that's correct. Also, And also, if you're an astronaut uh, walking on Mars and you want to change the environment to have a, uh, a sandstorm hit your space capsule, you can do it just like that. Imaginary worlds created. In fact, the Science Channel put me in a virtual reality room with dinosaurs, yeah. and they, I put my head in the middle of a T-Rex. Oh, you can't yeah. do that in two dimensions, oh, wow. but there I was putting my head in the mouth of a T-Rex in the third dimension. I did the same thing. It was extraordinary and very exciting when you see him coming toward you. In the dinosaur, mm -hmm. you yeah. did it too? Yeah. Wow. yeah. So are there any downsides to this? Several. One is motion sickness. People sometimes <laughs> get seasick because yeah. what you yeah. see yeah. does not match what you feel in your inner ear and the yeah. brain gets confused. Also, you cannot walk in one direction before you hit the wall. So you have to go to what is called an omnidirectional treadmill. And the Science Channel actually put me in one made by the military. All right. The military will actually put you in the middle of Baghdad, That's in great. the middle of Baghdad, walking in any direction for any length of time through all you. the alleyways. Thank you, Professor Michio Kaku.